Hello guys, and finally, welcome back to the second half of the Massive Tutorial. As you know, as I warned you, the second part of the tutorial would be about creating other types of sounds apart from LFO basses. I show you how to use a stepper, the LFO for other means, envelopes, and to create different noises, different filters, etc. To try and create different sounds apart from harsh basses, for example, keys, and leads and nice soft sounds as well just to show the diversity of massive as a plugin um and yeah just to develop your skills even more so you know some of the bits that i didn't quite go through with with the with the first half and also develop the song a little bit more i must say that i did not intend to make a song in that and i did not make a song in that it was merely samples of what it might sound like um so yeah guys without further ado take a look at it i hope you enjoy it as usual it's my casual self it's not um overly organized however you know the quality is good you can hear things at least very nice video quality took me a lot of time to uh edit and a lot of time to you know render and upload so please give me your feedback whether it be negative or positive after watching the entire tutorial and please do not ask me any questions about massive until you have watched this um if i do not answer the question during the video then fair enough give me a message uh you know leave a comment i will be reading all of these comments and uh, if you enjoyed it you know subscribe for more i mean i was gonna wait till 50 likes on the first one to upload this but you know it's not happening so the more support I get, the more likely I'm going to do a lot more and, you know, look into doing it a bit more professionally and, you know, taking people's advice into consideration. So, yeah, guys, please don't let me waste any more of your time. Go ahead and watch the video. Thank you. We're going to open a new instance of Massive because we we're just using drums and Massive for this entire song. Now we're going to start with a different type of synth. And so this one's going to be a bit like that. Um, and this and echoes that I created. It's going to be squarier, it's going to be nicer, less bassier. Uh, but we're going to make it all nice and dubstepy, hopefully. I don't know, I'm not the best. I'm not an expert, stop calling me that. Is that a small square too? Yeah, it is. These additives seem to be nice. Well, they are. They're not very, uh... Maybe we could do a bit of song. What's Woody? <laughs> What's that? No. <laughs> Whatever that is. Um, let's apply some delay to this. But we want the delay synced, because sync's easier. It goes with the song, you don't have to sync it up like the timing. I did have some issues with that in my older songs, where the, the delay went dum, 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 dum. And then, then the beat was like dum. Dum, dum, dum. Basically, it, it fell out of sync, and sync is just it it sinks to the bar. So, it's probably overkill. Let's get the right notes first. I don't know why I'm in the happy mood at the moment. I'm used to doing annoying, like, not annoying, sorry, angry or sad. Well, those notes work. I 
Um, but yeah, but I want to show you some other techniques as well with the envelopes. So at the moment, let's just hold that forever. I don't want that. I want it to be a a one hit thing. Um, you know. So I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, basically, the amp here is four at the moment, and that is that annoying thing that I told you with. It's probably better in this case because it's a one hit thing, so it's meant to be, you know, hard and fast. Um. Let's just put some reverb on here. See, this is the same. It's cool how this is the same plugin as this. <laughs> so, um, have I saved that bass? I want to save that bass. Probably going to be dry. For some reason I'm thinking... Dry Cat. <laughs> That's the name, guys. Dry Cat. Bracket LFO. I'll have to put all the, um... Metadata, and I don't usually, but just for the sake of it, I'll show you. So you assign it to base. Um, I'm going to call it electric. Small, big, dry, process, layered, sequence, loop. It is kind of layered, but I'll put layered. Um... Let's go put the, uh, put the, uh, genre there. I'll do, um, low. It is distorted in my, is it quite hard? I'm trying to use miners, it's just not working at the moment for me. It's quite soft, it is quite soft, unfortunately. It's pulsating, so to speak. No LFO kind of thing there. It's not tempo synced, because that wouldn't work for the LFO. Um, I'll just do that for now. I can't bother with the author and all that. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I'll show you that in the next one. Uh, but remember, you know the LFO, there's, there's a lot to show you still. <laughs> um, so yeah, for, for the envelope for this. We want it to be a one-hit thing, so it's... It doesn't carry on. All you have to do there. Well, that's annoying, that. Well, I'll be damned. Why does the delay move that side? That is annoying. Oh, because the space has been... Oh, I don't know. See that, that, that? It feels like it's been sequenced. Or stepped, so to speak. Just because of the delay. Dum, dum, dum. It's hilarious. Oh, I just wanted to do something with this delay. Um, sync. I'm actually going to put the right to 8. And that creates a multitude of, like, noises. It's awesome. I 
Well, that work with this beat. I mean, it's using the same notes, but I don't think it's using the minor. The minor. Hey, it works. I like it, me like it, like it. However, the pace seems so quiet, why? That one minor note <laughs> made the song a little bit more interesting. Um, let's, but anyway, let's just <laughs> continue with this. Envelopes are cool. Um, as you can see, there's all these little squares around everywhere, and you've already seen it with the LFO. Basically, you can drag anything into those, as far as I'm aware. So what I could do... What happens if I drag the four envelope into it itself? Let's see if that's possible. Ah. Oh, crap, I've made it crash. Damn it. Infinite loop. No! Massive crash. Oh, no, no, it's done it. <laughs> I think it just ignored it. Because technically, that is like an infinite loop. Um, so... I think I'm doing the wrong thing with the envelope, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I do know what I'm doing. Um, is it release? Is that my problem? I managed to get envelopes working before. Oh, there we go. One shot. Jesus Christ. That means it'll just get run through it once. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> So yeah, basically it stops you from pressing it for too long, which can be useful. Sync, hey. So it works in this case. Um, linear, I think, would ignore the, the stepper, I'm not sure about that, um, but I'll go into the stepper in a minute. So, a quick thing I want to show you is just how you can use envelopes on different things. Um, hmm, how would a filter work on this? That's just an all pass, reducing it, which is quite cool, I'll show you that can work right now, why not? So we just simply, just like this. Select, uh, tap that, right click, uh, create automation clip, bring that down, so if we start, hmm, I'm using the envelope instead of actually. Uh, and actually, that should be the reverse. I think. Maximum value. No, 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 it's inversed. Why have you stopped working? 
Oh, it's just not very, uh... Well, anyway, this should be the maximum to start. And then go down, sorry, yeah. Quite feeble, like it's not the the best um, filter, but there's a way to uh, improve on that. And instead of simply just getting this cut off uh, on the filter here, a different way of doing that is actually let's see if this works. Um, so this is where macros come in. Now this is useful because macros can be linked to multiple um, of these, you know, these little boxes. So if you assign a macro over here, these macro controls, click this uh, for directional arrow and assign that to say intensity. Let's make that maximus. And the same here. Maximus. But it's you've got to be in sync, so you want to put these to the bottom. If that bar's at the bottom. So if you move this, for some reason it's not working. <laughs> Don't do this to me now. Maybe it's, it needs to be just minimum. Why I no do no do this? Why I no do this? Guys. I've used this I've used this a lot. Why why no work now? Move the macro. Move it. Why you no move it? If you move this, does the macro move? Nope. I may have to be right back. Um, yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, well, that's kind of strange. It's not updating the intensity. It's not updating this bar here, but it... Its effect is apparent. Uh, let's just keep applying these. It's kind of annoying for a tutorial. You know, you don't want them not to be able to see. But basically, now you can do the same thing. Um, you might notice, let's see if this works, well that does get clipped, this, this does get attached, but this macro control thing, say you're creating a preset for someone, or just for yourself in the future, you can assign the intensity, speed of the LFO, put it there, uh, the amount of echo, put it there, so you know the reverb and stuff, you just, just, just drag those into there, and then when you find your instrument in the browser, you'll see that they're all here. Um, now, I've been trying to rename this, and my friend himself, oh, he's got a later version of Massive, and so will you if you're about to buy it. Basically, I think you can type in a name there for what you want it to be called. Otherwise, I have to select from this list, so I can't guarantee anything. Um, but basically, you, you will be able to either select from this list or um, type in what the, uh, what the macro button does. And in this case, this is the, uh, the intensity, isn't it? So what I can now do, with somewhat more success, is click that. Wait, did you work? <laughs> right, and then create an automation clip. And then, just put these to the bottom. Put that like that. Put like that. Like that. And hopefully, uh, I don't know what automation clip that is. Let's delete that. Should be fine. So now when it plays, uh, I'm playing the automation clip again. So you can see what it does basically, and that's um, the, that's the uh, macro controls. So basically, I can, I can assign macros to everything, and um, we could see what happens then. Uh, that one macro control, and that just put everything to maximum minimum, which is hilarious. Um, 
Oh yeah, in the browser, this attribute panel is it adjusts search for what you're looking for. Um, so I want bases. I could just have gone through all of them. You know, I want a base. That's quite kind of easy. Um, kind of useful. But ow, what the hell is that? Anyway, I need to speed up. I think I don't know how long this has been going on. Um. So yeah, I've shown you that. Uh, now let's show you attaching envelopes to things. Um. Let's just. I've got a good idea. Yeah, we'll show you attaching envelopes and the separate in one. Um. In one thingamajig, you know, a thing. Oh, bloody hell. In one new preset, but first I'm just going to create the pattern for this, because we are making a song too. Why the hell is it pattern 15? Jesus Christ almighty. Right, so now I'm going to show you the last one. I'm going to save that. I like that. It's kind of a bit similar to my old ones, but... I'm going to call it Clean... Clean Me Up. <laughs> right, so the last one, I'm going to go a bit more uh, eccentric, if you like. There we are. Untitled sound. Wow, 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 wow. Let's try some insane. I think the math. Where's the math? I like math. Rough math. Yeah, math is probably a good one for uh, <laughs> bases, actually, now I think about it. Let's start with the default envelope. It's going to be a uh, gated one and pitch bends, uh, but we're just going to we're just going to kind of level this out a bit. Right, so we're going to go all out on envelopes this time. Start with the stepper. Well, no, let's make the sound a little bit better first. Um, try the tubes. Ooh, I like that. Let's turn up the non. See how that goes. Not sure about that, but um, <laughs> performance is kind of strange. I think it's just I don't know if I like it or not. Let's just attach it to the main amp. I don't know. I don't think I'll put it in the SC. Put it in the. Hmm. 
just a bit of a a wave that can control things. It's like LFO. Um, I'm not sure really, but I'm not gonna mess with that. Let's go with the stepper. Go to restart. We actually need to sand step it to a filter or something. You know, it doesn't have to be a filter, but I'm going to make it a filter. See a difference between them two. Now, unlike with the LFO, I want to make this synced. At least I do. And we want to make this faster. See what goes on there. Now, actually, you don't need to fill in all that. You can just uh, left click and just drag that across to however long you want it to loop. But I do like to create some variations. Good. At least I keep freaking putting my foot into. Must be a pin or something. Shit. Sorry guys for this interruption. I can't see it, so let's continue on. I'll do for its buzz. Um why don't we try some noise while we wait? You can hear that, but it's there. Uh... Also, I'm thinking my head sets a bit loud. Now, finally, we're going to mess about with envelopes a little bit. Um, so we're going to go to the blank envelope one. We're going to assign that to pitch here, which is right there. I'm going to assign it again to pitch and again to pitch to keep things quite uniform. It works the same way. The amount you drag is the amount this will affect it. So I'm going to make this 12. I'm going to drag it using this, though, because it feels more controlled than the one symbol over there. Um, and now you can, you can do this uh, inversely and all sorts. I don't know about half, but I'm not going to press that. Now that is quite a uh, <laughs> difference, wouldn't you say? Um, so I'm not sure if I can make the attack a different shape. That would be nice. How the hell do we select that? No, hold. That's strange. Why would it only make the middle section linear? Now you can either do it with a uh, envelope. Um. Frick is that? I found it. It is a pin. It's literally a pin. Ow. Interesting stuff. Let's minus this. About halfway, that's worrying me. That works. So 
So you can do things like that with an envelope. Um, what I do want to try, actually, is attaching an envelope to reverb. That should be fun. Uh, do I have any reverb? No, I don't. Um, try to the chorus then. <laughs> We want to make it maximize that. that. That's very hard to tell. I'm still using envelope two. I need to make it a longer. So let's make it obvious. That's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> yeah, you do notice that over time. Can make this step faster, obviously. I won't do it to 12 just because it's not in sync. So, what notes are we using again? <laughs> D5. A5. It's just a. Oh, it sounds so detuned. I don't know how well that's going to sound in a song, but... Sounds crazy. <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, there's a time and place for each filter. Um, I'm not very good with pitch at all. I like that, -na 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 -na. but then the other notes don't really work. Wait, I don't need to detune anything. Yeah, the half, the halfway. I did that, it sounded nice. So you can see how envelopes affect it over time, but I also just did just have an idea about affecting it using an LFO filter, the pitch. So we're going to try that. Um, sync it up, obviously, because we don't need to edit it over time. Um, Wait a minute now. Genuinely. <laughs> what if?
So I don't know how how useful that would be, but I can imagine like envelopes on echoes. You you want to start? You know, like on mine, uh, the start of this you can make it just so like uh, the envelope was just the release of the echo, the delay. Let's try that. We only need it halfway. Put it at zero, that's actually quite handy. There you go, there's... No reverb, what if you... Okay, just right, you can just click the end off. There you go. So it's like, on the release of the note. When You know when the note gets cut off by the fourth uh, envelope here? Uh, well, you can't really see on, on the graph, but at the same time, the echo just comes in to catch it to... Look at that, instead of the intense, like, um, the intense kind of, you know, it, it makes it echo too much, I suppose. Well, that's a way to, to control it, I suppose. Try it, let's, let's listen to it now. See if you can hear any difference. Again, I don't know if I actually like it. But it will always have its uses, like... You know, it's just getting the control of exactly what sound you want. Feedback? It's strange. Hmm. I personally don't recommend it. I can't use it. I, I don't know what to do with it. Um, phasing? See, it doesn't do what you would think it would do. Phasing is meant to be from like side to side. And I'm taking it, this is from oscillator 1, 2, and 3. You can only apply one of these effects to each. But they all have a small effect. But like I said, you can control things, you know, through envelopes, through LFOs, um, or through these steppers, which is cool. Pitch might be quite cool. Let's do this. Hmm. Let's do it in this one because we've really got no... Off. Off. I mean, we do have the... But that's pretty cool because we can actually just change this <laughs> into another stepper. Which is handy because we didn't really want that to begin with. Let's try and make this pitch work somehow. Let's make this... Can't really see the values. Taking it halfway is 6. If we actually assign this to... It's not to the grid, that'll help. Um, Actually, just need to... That. We only need the first two, actually. But, this might work. This might be a better way to pitch. Doesn't sound very good, but... 
can you see that though? If we assign the same stepper to this one, and make it from minus 6 to plus 12, you suddenly got quite a complex beat. Now what we can also do is switch these LFOs out for more steppers. And actually we can uh, we can make this completely arpeggiated, so to speak. So we can make the sync rate of this one 4 instead of 8. Assign it to that. Mm, yeah, well, that would help. And we're getting some pretty scary sounds here, but... <laughs> Just sounds like a siren. <laughs> Everything has its uses somewhere. <laughs> Let's listen how well that works with our track. I think just removing this one might work. still hear it there in the background, it's, it's annoying, even though it's an octave. Maybe if you move it, move it, move it to like the middle one. But you know, you've got a lot of control over the sound. What you're hearing there isn't actually um, that going lower. It's just because it's so. That actually works. That actually works. So when you change note, it doesn't work. <laughs> I've got a good idea. I know, I can't do it with pitch. Screw it. Go away. But I can do it. with amplitude maximize the fuckery out of that so now i've got this hitting every every two um beep 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 beep, beep instead of every single one now what you could do this might sound all right is if we make this 16 and we sign that just do the same it's the same thing. Um, assign six step to the higher one. Was any of them higher? No. Now what you've got. It's quite a scary thing because of that friggin' noise. Or something that doesn't isn't affected. Because we use seven step. So we need to put there you go. Right. Yeah, that's much better. 
Vamos para. Quite a bit noise. <laughs> now let's go insane and and apply some uh, reverb to it. We don't need this chorus, do we? Do we really? Not really. I mean, it's good noise, but well, I might keep that and remove the C tube. Because really all that is is an amplification. Just watch. So if you amplify this, it's fine. It's basically the same effect. Let's make this a delay. Let's make it a sync delay. Dry wet has ruined that. What you're doing is you're creating loads of like blips. It's really full. If you do a chord, I don't know how a chord's gonna go, but. Pretty cool, I don't know about what you think, but it's not very dubstepy, but I can think of something dubstepy to go with it. Feels like each new synth make is louder than the next. Let's put them on the uh, mixer and see for ourselves. For once, the drums aren't overpowering. That is unusual. Ah, that's because that's so quiet. Is that the envelope? No, it isn't. <laughs> that was a cool effect. Um... Better, it's fine, it's calling a bit more now. This has been 
like I said, I'm not, I'm not very um genre um what's the word? How do I put this? I'm not true to genres, so to speak. Um bit pretty unconventional, that's the word for it. Uh but that's just what I am. Well, that, that probably has covered up most of the things. Uh, so we've done a bass, we've done like a key. Sounds pretty similar to that, but this is more of a gated thing. Um, so yeah, LFO bass. Uh, and I've shown you all the tools. Envelopes, you know, you've got the LFO, how that works. It's all just about dragging on, and you know, when you drag it on, don't forget to tell it how much you want it to affect it, uh, which is just done by dragging that up and down. Uh, panning's cool. Panning, even. I might. I'm gonna do that on. On these probably. Um, just gonna do a quick one. Hopefully, it should. Now, an LFO might be better for it, just because if if you can get a restart on it, then that'll be good. That might work. How about a one shot. Oh, just reverts. Let's see how that works. I like that because on the long notes it goes over to the right. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, showing you how to integrate it with FL Studio. Showing you how, as well as much as I can, how to integrate it with any kind of mini keyboards. Um, yeah. Let's get a range of sounds out of it. But it's just more about playing about. You know, you've got three main noise makers. You've got some random thing I don't know about. You've got noise, which I just can't find, seem to get anything nice sounding out of it, or feedback. And you've got the inserts, which I forgot to do on some of them. Yeah, the parabolic shaper is, sounds like the same as the sine shaper. There must be a difference between the two. Uh, but in the waveform, it seems like they're the same. But, oh well. So, look, this marks the end of the tutorial, most probably. Don't forget to use your macros to make things easier. When you uh, do your presets. Um, and yeah. That's probably about it. LFO. Stepping. I mean, it's, the cool thing is, you don't just have to step... Uh, like volume, you can step volume, you can step pitch, you can step panning, you can step a filter, which I could probably add. I mean, eight, eight is linked to the stepper. works and you can link it to everything that's the cool thing so it's about making a change in sound over time i suppose uh but yeah i think that's about it guys i know it's probably gone on too long i don't know how long it's gone on. i might have to do some editing um 
But thing is, what I don't like with the tutorials is it's like, um, to make a base, click this button, then this button, then this button, then this button. I, I'm basically showing you what each of the things can do, but I, <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do, you know what I mean? I'm just providing examples, um, I'm leaving you to mess about, because as long, long as you know the basics, like, all I did to learn this was mess about, and then, um, I went, hey, Michael, I'm going to do a tutorial, do you think I know everything? And I listed everything to him, and he's like, well, no, you know, you, you, for, you do you know about macros? And I was like, I don't know what those, oh, wait, can they be used to do, like, multiple at the same time? Uh, is that what, is that linked to the browser bit there? And it's like, yeah, yeah, um, so yeah. Uh, that's about it, I think. My training thought was completely gone. I would like, I don't know, it feels like there isn't enough kind of, uh, gen you know, gen generic oscillators. I haven't tried those, though. There's a point. Second one. No, the third one. The third one will do. What about these? Whoa. Try what that sounds like. That's nice. That was me pressing a note. Cute. Let's save this. And that marks the end of the massive tutorial, I suppose. Um, seriously, making the best bases you can. Suppose you just have to work on if you want like a punchy one, then the LFO. You want to turn up the LFO's effect on the cutoff of the different filters, so it's like, vroom, vroom, vroom. and of course the different shapes if you want it smooth or really harsh. Um, and obviously you want to probably go for saw, um, for basses, but you want to smooth the sounds for light, for you know higher up notes. Um, but just f don't forget about the detuning and that. You don't want them to clash. And the same for the if you use two different LFOs. It might cause a problem, uh, but then it might make it sound awesome. <laughs> so what are we going to call this? This is probably already taken. It isn't. Cool. I'll call this gated. Well, that's it, guys. I hope this wasn't... I hope this answered most of your questions. If you've got any questions left, uh, just let me know. There, re there really isn't much more to cover. It's just about experimenting and taking time. You know, I've learned some stuff while I've been playing this. Um, this, I think, is the pitch changing based on where you place that. Now, I wish I didn't touch that. I can never know. I hope that's right. Well, I haven't saved it anyway, so that's fine. I think that's a cut-off. But oh well, I'm not worrying about that. Yeah, I've showed you the voicing, the routing, that's just showing you how everything's routed up, like it goes through this and this, and then obviously the feedback is the last thing to come back. Uh, yeah, BPM, external sync, if you just toggle that if you want it to be a different BPM, which would be a bit strange. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, obviously, if you want, if you can't get like... If you've got a bad computer, then you might want to turn down settings. That can help a lot. I don't know why I keep getting that freaking sign there. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> but I would, uh, for producers, I'd recommend you do get a mini keyboard or controller or something. Just because it, it allows for... Because like, you can't do melodies as, as easily on um, a keyboard or just placing the notes. Um... Damn, this tutorial's been long. <laughs> well, here it is. Um, it will be edited, I'm sure, because I can't upload something so humongous. Um, but thanks for watching, guys. Um, there will be tutorials on Gross Beat. Um, and FPC, I've basically shown you. There's not really much more to that. Um, but I will be doing s some other FL Studio tutorials, I suppose. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. I hope I answered your questions. I hope it was uh, everything was covered. Uh, if not, leave me a message, I'm sure I'll be able to answer you. But that's all there is too, Massive. Believe it or not. Uh, 
See, I used to think like, oh my god, this this doesn't do half the things that uh, I hear in songs, or this doesn't, you know, this program doesn't do what it says it did, but it's actually just imagination and just mastering the controls that really gets the best sounds, I suppose. So, yeah, I think that, that's, that wraps it up, guys. Thanks for watching once more, and I will see you next time.